Our next category of controls is orientation controls. Orientation controls include angularity, perpendicularity, and parallelism. The orientation of features must be given in relation to datums. A table that is flat isn't useful if you failed to control the angle of the tabletop in relation to the ground. When we ask if a table is level, we are asking if it is level in relationship to the floor, which we assume is level. The floor is acting as a datum feature simulator in this instance, allowing us to tell if the table is level or parallel to the floor. Without the datum, a table floating weightlessly in directionless space can't be defined as level. Orientation controls refer to either a surface, median plane, or axis called out with a basic angle in relation to a datum. Angularity is used to call out every angle except 90 and 180 degrees or zero. When a surface or median plane is controlled with angularity, the tolerance zone is between two parallel planes that are nominally at the stated basic angle. If this surface is called out at a 45 degree angle from datum A with a 0.5 millimeter tolerance, you could imagine a plane exactly at 45 degrees, and then a tolerance zone of 0.5 millimeters centered on that plane. Every part of the angularity controlled surface must fit within the 0.5 millimeter tolerance zone to pass inspection. This is not the same as a plus or minus tolerance of an angle such as 45 degrees plus or minus 0.5 degrees as that would create a wedge shape of tolerance instead of two parallel planes surrounding a nominal orientation. A plus or minus degree is not a GD&T method of tolerancing. The same idea holds true for an angularity control for an axis, though the TZ for axis angularity can be slightly different than for other axial callouts. While most axis controls create a three-dimensional cylindrical tolerance zone in which the axis must fit, Angularity can be used to create either a cylindrical or planar tolerance zone, depending on the drawing. On this part, we're controlling the angle of a pin in relation to the bottom of this part. If the pin is defined with a normal angularity callout, the tolerance zone will be between two parallel planes, just like for a surface or medial plane callout. In this case, the planes would extend across the part like this. The axis of the pin would need to fall in between those planes. However, that means that while this side view angle is controlled, the pin could be askew in another orientation like this above, as long as the axis was still between the two planes. A commoner logical use for this type of callout would be a hole passing through a shaft or pin. In this case, the part is only stabilized by the datum axis A. The shaft can still rotate around that axis, but according to the callout, the axis of the hole needs to be between two planes that are 0.2 millimeters apart and are centered on the nominal location, or 21.86 millimeters from the end, and are always perpendicular to datum axis A. The axis of the hole needs to remain between these two planes no matter the rotation of the shaft itself during inspection. However, if the callout is changed to include the diameter symbol, the callout now creates a cylindrical tolerance zone at the basic angle in which the entire axis of the pin or hole must fit. Our 3D rendering of the tolerance zone now looks more like this. You should keep in mind that these callouts are not dependent on the angle of the drawing view, but instead on the datums that are referenced. This angled protrusion, when stabilized with only one datum, could still pass inspection at these angles. In every case, the surface is 50 degrees in relation to datum A. If the orientation in the drawing is what you want, adding additional datums will control the remaining degrees of freedom of the part during inspection. Now the part would be held by three sides, controlling all degrees of freedom before the orientation is checked. Perpendicularity actually works the same way as angularity, but at 90 degree angles. And parallelism is the same, but at 0 or 180 degree angles. All of the TZs and principles stay the same, 
and create TZs between two parallel lines or planes that are oriented in reference to a datum or a cylindrical TZ when the diameter symbol is included for diametric features. Keep in mind that orientation controls must reference a datum and the drawing must give a basic angle if using angularity callouts. As always, the datums you choose to reference depend on your design intent. Note here that even though both of these surfaces are nominally vertical, this drawing shows it is more important for this vertical edge to be parallel to B while this vertical edge instead should primarily be perpendicular to A. Now it's time for an understanding check on all of the orientation callouts.